What's up, everybody? Welcome to another primary source walkthrough. This time we have the source World War II and Mexican Americans uh, to give us another sense of what the uh, the home front was like uh, during World War II, uh, especially afterwards. So, um, first of all, what this source is is it's an editorial um, from the uh, group called LULAC. That is the United League, or the League of United Latin American Citizens. Uh, and their goal is, as the introduction says here, uh, to campaign for equal treatment for uh, Latinos um, across uh, the United States. And what they've noticed is that uh, since World War II, uh, the treatment of uh, Latinos... Uh, has not been particularly uh, welcoming. Um, and as you kind of read, uh, or hopefully you read, um, uh, some of the secondary sources, uh, including the textbook, uh, that the, 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 there had been kind of a move towards um, reimagining uh latinos especially mexican americans uh, as a a different uh race and ethnicity and there's a lot uh, to be said about um kind of the creation of this category of illegal immigrant uh etc uh, around the 20s and 30s and um you can see that kind of borne out uh in this source now if you're looking for some good secondary material uh, to kind of support this. Um, there are a couple books uh, that I would recommend. Number one, uh, America for Americans. That's Erica Lee's book, uh, which is part of the, um, uh, it is the secondary reading this, uh, this week. Um, the chapter that you're reading is about Japanese internment, of course, uh, but she also has chapters on um, treatment of Mexican Americans. Um, there's uh, another book called Decade of Betrayal about the 1930s and Mexican uh, Americans that I would suggest you look at. Uh, and then there is uh, the book that I had you uh, take a look at um, a couple weeks ago. Um, I forget the title right now and I don't have it on the shelf immediately next to me. Um, but check out that secondary that secondary reading, uh, and also, um, yeah, to just check out that secondary reading. There was another book that I was thinking of, and I just it's not coming to me right now, and it's killing me. Uh, in any case, so let's jump into uh, some of the things that this um, that this source points out, and I think. Uh, its strength is to really give you a, a sense of the uh, feelings uh, that many uh, Mexican Americans had uh, in this um, in this post-war uh, United States, and what they what they start off here with is uh, a quote uh, or a couple quotes from people. Um, that are unattributed, but kind of express the general sentiment of the uh, of the kind of anti-Mexican feeling. Um, you know, and they say it matter-of-factly, your uniform and service ribbons mean nothing. Uh, we still don't allow Mexicans in here. Uh, and they, they talk about these feelings of embarrassment and humiliation. Uh, they... They make a, a really interesting appeal here, and this this might be uh, confusing to you. So they say in this editorial, there is no difference in race. Latin Americans or so-called Mexicans are Caucasian or white. There are only three races, the Caucasian, the Negroid, and the Mongoloid. Um, that is white, black, and Asian. Um... Of course, we know that that is not the case. And this is some pretty, uh, uh, let's just say, some mid nineteen forties language. Um, but if you're confused, like how could you say that Mexicans were white? Well, legally speaking, they were class uh, Mexicans were classified as white 
uh, for a a good long time. Uh, it wasn't until the the turn of the 20th century um, that that designation starts to be questioned and undermined, uh, which we saw a little bit uh, when you um, read, or hopefully you read the that secondary source. Um, it, they talk about this. The author talks about this and. Um, stamped from the, not stamped from the beginning, it's a different book, A Decade of Betrayal. Um, and uh, you can uh, you can see that in, in that discourse. Um, of course, uh, that uh, that's problematic in and of itself, and, and I think that uh, some of that comes from kind of like the, the Hispanic... Um, uh, background uh, that is people who were literally from Spain, you know, tying to that Euro- European um, kind of Caucasian uh, ancestry. And you might notice, like, when you fill out like job applications or college applications or any time that you are asked, um, or like maybe even in a survey for your race, you'll notice um, that you can. St- check white but also check non-hispanic or latino um so there, there's still kind of this legal uh legal framework that, that that's a bit questionable um in any case what this source is getting at is that they're trying to locate the 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 source of um this prejudice um, because they, they can't figure it out. They're, they're saying there, there's really no difference uh, in race, even if their categorization is not familiar to us. Um, you know, one of the things that they seem to be taking issue with is a criticism that Mexicans speak Spanish uh, and how white Americans see this as a detriment. And they're saying, no, uh, isn't it great that somebody can actually understand more than one language? Uh, and I think that's, that that's a sentiment that carries um i i think people who know more than one language especially in the states are seen as uh particularly smart it, languages are hard to learn um you know having studied slash learned latin ancient greek french german and kind of sort of teaching myself italian um and a little bit of Spanish too. Uh, languages are not easy to learn at all. Um, I think ancient Greek was the hardest of those, though German was a close second. Man, man, German's hard for me. In any case, um, but you know, still in, in the United States today, uh, we see videos every other week. It seems of some white person yelling at Spanish speakers for not speaking English. Um, and, uh, it gets passed around social media. So th- this, this attitude has not gone anywhere, but ultimately, uh, the editorial argues that this prejudice comes from, uh, ignorance that yes, ignorance broods hate and all of its results in actions of jealousy, misunderstanding, erroneous opinions, and premeditated feelings of discord and confusion. An ignorance of the cultural contributions of Americans of Latin American descent to the still young American culture, the ignorance of the blood, sweat, and efforts given to this country for its betterment, an ignorance of the sufferings uh, withstood and the lives given to preserve this country free and independent through its various periods of strife and conflict. And finally, an ignorance of a sense of appreciation of a long, if my thumbs will work, profitable and loyal association with a group of Americans whose voice cries out in desperate supplication. Now, what they're arguing kind of um, implicitly here is that uh, all it will take is an education um, of these issues to demonstrate to Americans that Mexican Americans deserve the same um, treatment the same respect as white Americans, especially veterans. Um, and, and Foner poses a really interesting question here. Um, what are the implications of explaining prejudice and discrimination as arising from ignorance rather than economic self-interest? And I think how you answer that question depends on, you know, what are the things that you 
you yourself want to to focus on um there's not a lot of talk of economics or anything like that uh in the document but at the same time you know a lot of um a lot of arguments you know like anti-immigrant arguments at least now are like you know they took our jobs or they're taking our jobs etc uh and here you know that's that's not the case that's not the the thing that the the document is appealing to instead it's appealing to you know people just don't realize how much mexican americans have given now i think you could also make the argument um that even that sort of education um that alleviation of ignorance um may not solve the problem because it, it, racism um is not just ignorance uh racism is often a willingness to believe x y and z about uh about another group of people um in some cases, racism can't be educated out. Uh, it's, you know, you can show somebody who's racist all of these different contributions and will they actually change their mind about um, the, the people who, uh, who they're saying racist things about. Um, and I don't know, but that's something that you need to wrestle with. Uh, and I know I say that a lot, but it is something that you as an American and given where we are uh, a lot of a lot of you are latin american latino um chicano uh mexican you know whatever label you want to claim for yourself and uh i would imagine that some of this feels um quite familiar to you uh so wrestle with it think about it um at the very least you know we can see here uh that uh here at the uh the home front um right after world war ii uh, even during World War II, uh, things are not as harmonious as uh, other history textbooks might want you to believe. So keep that in mind. Um, we'll be back uh, next week with some more uh, primary source walkthroughs. And until then, ladies and gentlemen, stay safe and healthy, and I'll catch you on the next one.